back to the resin rainbow. Today I'm going to make a resin jewellery box. So if you saw on my shorts, I made this one the other day. This one I made in really sort of vibrant colours. Um, I used the precious gold mica pigment from Just View Online and then this gorgeous multicoloured glitter from Create and Bloom Crafts, which is called Sundara. Um, so I'm not going to go quite as vibrant this time, but it's a lovely one because it's got a hinged lid um, and I just added little touches of glitter here and there because I like my glitter. So I'm going to do a similar um, sort of style with using the glitter on the sides as well, but I'm going to go for more neutral tones today. So the colours I'm thinking of using for the body of the box, um, I'm going to use an ivory pigment from Just For You Online, which will give a lovely subtle um, pearlescent sheen but keep everything very neutral and then for glitters this one doesn't have a lid because it was part of a test batch but this is one of um, Create and Bloom Craft's new bio glitters this is called Isla and it's a uh, sort of like an iced latte brown I would say but you can see even though it's a plant glitter I believe they're something like 97% plant cellulose that they're made from um, it hasn't lost any of its sparkle so it's I'm still going to get that gorgeous holographic glitter that I know that we all know and love um, so I'm going to use that for the lid and then I'm going to add just the teeniest touch of courage which is a very fine old gold sort of holographic glitter um, and that's purely just because like I said in my previous oh, oh gosh I've got glitter all over my mould now this is why you shouldn't open them on the top I'll have to get something to get that out in a minute um, I just like combining chunky and fine glitters because I always find that the chunky glitters will sink and if your mould is quite thick or quite deep then you end up with almost like a clear layer at the back. So just adding a sprinkle of that should help to kind of reduce that. I'm just going to go and get some tape just to clean this out of my mould um, and I'll be back. That'll teach me to open glitter over my mould. Um, I just used a little bit of, like I did in my previous one, just some low-tack tape. And I was thinking, to be honest, it doesn't, doesn't matter too much because I will be pouring a bit of glitter in the bottom. Um, so this mould comes in different sections. What I've got on this tray, because I have to work on trays, are all the sides. So I'm going to do this part first and then I've got the lid on a separate tray. Um, I've already mixed up my resin. I'm using my favourite high gloss again because the lid is intricate. This being low viscosity is going to be able to get into all those um, little nooks and crannies. But I've already mixed that um, off camera. If you want to see a full video of how to mix and measure resin then check out the video that I did previously which is the split pour coasters. Um, I uh, just didn't think there was any need to show it on screen again. So I've already got it mixed up. I have mixed up 500 millilitres. This mould takes quite a lot. When I made it first, I mixed up 300 thinking it would be plenty. And I was finding that I had to quickly mix up more, try and colour match. So this time I've mixed up 500 millilitres. Um, and I would say at the moment in my cups, I've divided it between two cups. And at the moment I have got... Um, probably 200 in each and I've got 100 spare um, so obviously if I need to I can um, add extra in afterwards so this is just the ivory I just fancied going for more of a neutral colour palette today um, just thinking of my own bedroom to be honest which is more of kind of oatmeals and beiges so I just thought it might be nicer to go for something that's a little bit more neutral but still with that lovely glitter so I'm just going to mix that in it almost looks yellowy in the cup but when you pour it it does become that lovely ivory tone and as I said before with mica powders you want to really make sure they're mixed so I don't know if you can see there's little lumps of mica powder I don't know if that's is that focused a bit better like on the side right there so you don't want those you want to break those up because otherwise if they sink through your resin you end up with blobs of mica powder on the other side and it just doesn't look that pretty you want it to be fully dispersed through the resin plus a good mix just make sure that you haven't got any bits of unmixed resin in there 
as well. So it's kind of like a little extra safety thing to make sure your resin is fully mixed. I've got quite a lot in here as well, so I'm going to need to make sure that um, I work fairly quickly. I can't tell if this is in focus or not. I'm really sorry if it's blurry. <laughs> oh, I'm still figuring out how to, what's the best way to film, to be honest. Um, I'm trying a million and one different ways. If you've got any suggestions, please pop them in the comments. Right. Looks like satin, doesn't it? Gorgeous. So that's that one. Um, I'm going to do my glitter, but I'm going to put it in away from the mould so I don't have the same problem. So I'm mixing in the Isla, plenty of Isla. That's the bio glitter. And then a little bit of that holographic courage. It's a really fine glitter, but I don't want it to dominate. So I've only added one small touch of that. Right. Oh, there we are. And just mix that through as well. So I don't know if you can see, there's like the little subtle, it probably doesn't come across that well on camera, but I can see here sort of mixed in with all those really chunky hexes of glitter, there's really fine gold holographic and that's exactly what I was hoping for. Right. Now I'm going to have to be careful because... Um, what I might do actually is put some of this into another cup because it's quite full and I want to get some going along the edges and I always find you won't have as much control if you're pouring from a large amount. So I'm just going to tip a little bit into another cup. That's fine. Just so that I've got the ability to really control where it goes. Um, I'm quite precise when I pour I know lots of people when they pour they tend to pour freely and that's fine I just like being more precise precise so I always make sure I've got a little spout and then I always take my time and just pour really slowly so you know which side is going to be the bottom because it's the side that's got the little holes because these bits that you can see this is where your box is going to slot together I did find when I was fixing my other box together you do need to have some sort of adhesive because otherwise it doesn't hold. And it's also important to note that don't overfill your mould. If you do, then obviously these won't fit together nice and snugly and that's what you want. So this is going to be the bottom and this, and then over on this side, which are the longer sides, it'll be this bit and this bit. So just going along the edge. Sorry, trying to, trying to focus the camera. And I don't want much, I only want a little bit this is just so that the base of the box has something interesting as well it's just it's a little bit like what I did with the other one except I didn't want to go just all over so I'm sticking to kind of just the base and then I will fill the rest up with the ivory it doesn't matter if you go over the top of these little ridges because it will fall off being silicone so I'm going to start with that with those and then I'm going to move up to do these helps if you have a steady hand which quite luckily I do have quite steady hands but it doesn't matter you pour how you like to pour this is this is just how I like to pour. I'm just trying to make sure I've got some on either side of these little ridges. There we go. And then I am going to put a little bit just waiting for the drop there we go <laughs> a little bit like I did on the other one uh, do you know what? I always change my mind no I'm gonna go around the edge I'm gonna go around the edge 
this is the base this part and the way I did this was I flipped it over once I poured like you would on a normal sort of pour I flipped it over um so that the side that's facing up now is going to be the bottom and I only did that I've I'm running out by here I might need a tiny bit more um was because it gives a slight ridge on the bottom which helps to just stabilize the box I'm just adding a tiny bit more into here it's probably too much now but it doesn't matter because I'm going to use it in the lid anyway um right, I'm gonna just go along the edge yeah Slightly more there, have I? See? There we go. Right. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my ivory, which again is quite full, but I'm not as worried about that for the bigger pores um, because as it, it, I'm filling up a larger section. So I'm still going to just push it in slightly just to have that control. If you over push it, it's going to flow over the top. So just be careful. I'm going to go for the base first. And I'm just going to pour roughly into the middle and let it flow out to the sides. Move move my cup along slightly. And this is where it really does not help that I don't have a level table. <laughs> oh, the joys of trying to work in a craft space that's not perfectly designed for crafting. A little tip, just stop before your mould is totally full because the resin will continue to move and settle. And you can always top it up, but it is a nightmare trying to take take it out. I'm also going carefully to make sure that, because I'm really worried actually that I haven't got enough ivory. I mixed, um, I kind of divided them evenly. And I think in hindsight, you probably need slightly more of your block colour than you do your glitter. It depends how you want to pour it, but for, for my design... I, luckily I've got I did keep some back spare but you can see it takes more than you think so I'm just gonna this is where I'm gonna have to colour match now and hope that I get the same sort of tone so I've still got a bit of clear in here so I'm just gonna add I'm gonna add the rest of this in um because I don't think I'm gonna need any more glitter I think I've got I'm gonna have plenty of glitter for the lid so I've just added the rest of my clear. It was about an extra 100 mil. So I've used 500 mil in total. I haven't poured it all yet. Um, th my trouble is once I, when I pour a mould, I never make a note of how much the mould takes. And what I've seen people do, which I really need to start doing, to be honest, is um, they write in a Sharpie, they write on the mould how much it takes so that you know for next time. So I really need to start doing that because... I always forget <laughs> and then I'm thinking oh did it take that or did it take that and I usually end up with too much but it's better to have too much because you can always pour into another mold so I'm just mixing up a little bit more of this ivory color and because I've already poured I'm just trying to scrape the side so it is all fully mixed I don't want any bits unmixed And then I'll have a quick look and top up where I need to. So yeah, when pouring the sides, just really take your time because if it does overflow, um, you are going to end up with a problem where it doesn't, the box doesn't fit together the best. And you can always trim it down, but it's it's better to try and get it right first time if you can. Right. Okay, so I'm going to have a quick look. Now, as I said, my table isn't level, so I don't know if you can't see very well, but I don't know. At the top, these are all empty and down the bottom, they're full. But I know that my table's on a bit of a wonk. So I'm going to just lift it slightly to where it's hopefully level. I should have a spirit level, really. Look at me. I'm t I'm t <laughs> I should have this. I should have that. I should do this. Very unprepared. This is just how I'm used to working, to be honest. I've I've always had this kind of setup with resin because I don't have a craft room yet. It would be lovely if I did one day. You never know. 
but at the moment I don't. So I literally pour with what I've got. So if you're like me and you don't, then don't worry about it because I'm exactly the same. And I'm just going to come onto this one and let it flow around these little holes. These parts are the bits where the lid is going to hinge. So do that. I'm just going to get my glitter mix back um, because I'm just going to, I haven't got much left in there, but I just want to top before I pour into the middle. I just want to go sort of like this and fill these with a little bit of the glitter. So if you've got a lovely shot of my arm. <laughs> right, so I've just topped those up with some of that glitter. I'm now going to just pour a little bit more of this in the middle. It is tricky to know that you're not overfilling. But I think that looks fairly okay. I'm going to move this straight away because I'm going to put it on my level surface. surface. <laughs> and um, I should be able to see then if I need to top up. And if I do need to top up, then I will use my glitter just along the edges and that should help to kind of like fill it up slightly. But before I do that, um, I'm just gonna torch my bubbles. So I can already see them, you probably can't on camera, but if you use um, a really good resin, like the Apex resins from Just For You Online, are fantastic for bubble release. So when you pour, you will see the bubbles come to the surface and they'll pop by themselves. They will be the odd ones that need a little bit of help just to pop. Um, and this is just a regular long handled lighter that you can get from anywhere that I use. I don't use a blowtorch because I do worry about fusing the mould. So this just allows me to have more control. And it's better than a heat gun because heat gun blows your resin everywhere. Right. OK, I'm going to move this and I'll come back and we'll do the lid. OK, here's the lid bit. So you can see it's really intricate. It's kind of like filigree um, or lace or something like that. So you can either just pour over the top and scrape off afterwards, or you can be like me and you can try and pour in between. Now my resin's getting really quite warm, so I'm just going to go. Um, I'm going to pour in the middle and then I'm going to pour around the outside. But the high gloss, even as it's warming up, is brilliant for getting in to all those little areas and when I did this last time because I'd let it do this I'd let it sit for a tiny little bit um, it lost all the bubbles that were in there so I didn't have any trapped bubbles at all you can always go around with a little toothpick or something like that because be careful using heat on a mold like this if you get any of these edges stuck it will ruin the mould and it will also ruin your make. So I'm trying to not go over the top if I can help it only because I just get annoyed with picking off bits of dried resin afterwards. Um, it, lots of it will fall down. Uh, but I try and as accurately as I can, plus this is the part of resin I quite like. Just taking your time and pouring even into intricate designs like this. I know lots of people would just pour on top and scrape it across and things like that. But I also help this think this helps again to stop bubbles getting trapped because you're pouring directly into the crevices. Is that, is that the right word to use? Um, so now I'm just going to let that flow around for a minute just see where I need to fill up. I've still got quite a bit of this left, so I'm going to make do some leftover things. So I'd say it probably needs about 450, 400 mil rather than 500 millilitres. If you're working in millilitres in terms of grams, it, I don't know because I don't, I don't measure my resin in grams. But I worked, I measured out 500 millilitres and I've got a fair bit of this left. So I think it's probably going to be 
about 400 mil. And that's fine. If you mix up too much, like me, I do it all the time, just have a stash of moulds nearby that you can just quickly grab and you can pour whatever you've got left into, even if you don't fill that other mould. Sometimes my prettiest makes have actually been combinations of other makes poured into one. Just having a look. So if you can see an area, again, this is more just me, but if you can see an area like here where it's overflowed a bit, you can just pull it off. I, I just like to keep my moulds clean as much as possible. Um, it just makes clean up easier afterwards, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with having that. And like I said, if for ease you want to just pour over the top and let it flow and then just coax it down, that's absolutely fine. I just like pouring the way I do. But everybody's different. We all pour differently. Right. When you are torching bubbles with this, be really careful and don't dwell on one spot too long. So I tend to go for the largest areas and I keep the flame moving. In a lick of heat will be enough to pop any bubbles and that that's it. I don't do any more than that because I worry that the, mo the mold will fuse to the resin. But that looks nice and full to me, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, when we come back to demold, I'll show you how I put the box together because it does need a little bit of fixing. But hopefully we should have a really pretty box. So this is going to need to cure. I'm pouring this in the morning. It's probably going to be cured and solid enough to demold because again, when pulling out of something intricate like this, you want it to be really nice and steady. Um, I'm probably going to need, I'm probably going to do it tomorrow. So I'll leave this to cure up for the rest of the day and overnight. And then by the time I come back to it, it should be really nice and solid and come out of the mould with no problem. Right, I'll see you then. Hello, right, we're back. Um, so I've left these now. I poured these in the morning and I'm back now the following afternoon just because I've been in work. So it's been quite a while. They're all set up completely solid, especially the lid. This is going to be the main... Uh, the main one that needs to be really solid to demold, but we're just going to take them out of the moulds, and I'm really hoping they're going to look pretty. On camera, this ivory looks quite yellow, but um, I'm hoping to show you it in natural light afterwards, where you'll see it really is that kind of ivory cream, sort of off-white colour. So, take that one out. That way. So I'm just going to take all the pieces out, then we'll flip them over and have a look. And then we'll put the box together then. It's a little bit tricky getting them out of the, getting the slots out. So just go slow because you don't want to rip anything. Those. I'll do the lid last because um, the lid does take a little bit of time just because it's so intricate that's all side pieces <laughs> right okay then so if we turn over this is going to be the base so I'm going to have the base this way up so that's what you'll see inside and it's come out really pretty. So I've got that, what I wanted, which was the kind of rim of the glitter just going around the outside. And then, same for that. Don't know if the camera, I've got a ring light set up because even though it's sunny outside, the light is not the best in where I'm filming. So I've just got a ring light. So sorry about the reflections. Um, but yeah, what I wanted was that little edging of glitter that's because this is going to be the base just to kind of add a little bit of interest, I suppose. So this one should be the same. And I didn't want much, just a smattering of glitter. So happy with those. And then my two side pieces again. Oh, off camera, sorry. Oh, I'm really pleased with those. They've come out really pretty and the shine from that high gloss resin. You just can't beat it. It's just fantastic. And now, this is the fun bit. <laughs> so when you demold the lid, 
it is tricky you will see you need a little bit of patience I'm gonna move these just so I've got a and this is why it needs to be solid because otherwise it will bend it's only because you've got all these little intricate bits and the mold is quite thick so when you pull it out um, it just takes a little bit of care and like I said just go slowly because it um, you don't want to rip the mold because it is a lovely mold to use but you can see what I mean it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge to get out will come you do get those satisfying demold noises though with the silicon coming away from the resin and this is why i said to be careful not to over torch because you don't want it to fuse to the mold so that's going to be the way of the lid you do find, I think, with this mould, that one side fits better than the other. So I just tried the other side piece. Because I definitely haven't overfilled my mould. I took great care not to do that. And see, that slots together, no problem. Um, let's hope that the other side slots in. This is where you can just check. This is a bit of a snug fit. But even though it's quite tight... I still think you need a little bit of your glue. Okay, so you just slot the bits in together. It's quite hard to do it on in front of, I usually like to do things like this close to me like that so I can get some perches on it. So there we are, see? So it does slot together nicely. And last side. Just make sure you obviously put it the right way. Um, what is worth doing, I would say, is put your lid in first before you put your other side on so that you actually have your box ready so you can do that. So I'm just going to finish doing this, putting this together. There we go. It's all fitted together. All the bits fit together fine. The lid does open and close. Um... All I need to do now, I would have shown it to you on screen, putting it together. It is literally a case. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle of just making sure you get all the pieces through the slots. And it just needs a little bit of time, which is why I didn't film the whole thing. Um, once it's gone together, the once you do find that it goes together easier the second time. And even though this one, this one's got a really snug fit um, compared to the last one I made. This one seems to have a much tighter fit. I don't know if maybe I filled it a bit more level um not really sure but either way i'm still going to secure it with some glue you could use uv resin i'm going to use araldite and um, this is just an epoxy resin glue it's a little bit like a super glue i suppose but it's kind of it is a resin glue so it's i think it's better for fixing epoxy resin um projects but you could use uv res resin if that's what you've got um, the thing I would say with this is make sure you wear gloves. It is very sticky stuff. I'm working a well-ventilated environment. It says on the packet that it's low odour, but I find there is quite a strong plasticky smell with it. So I've just got the window open and I'm just going to be working in a well-ventilated space, but I have got gloves to wear. Um, I'm going to take it apart again. And then it comes with a little spreader. This does come with little applicators as well, but I'm going to use the spreader. And just on the tabs, where the tabs slot together, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue, push it back together like this, and then just leave it for sort of around 15 to 20 minutes. And after that time, it should be well stuck um, and hold together. It's not really falling apart as it stands. My other one, when I was lifting it up like this and turning it round, the pieces were falling off because I think I was a bit too cautious um, with how full I filled the mould. But this one I'm much happier with. It seems to be much sturdier. But just for extra security, I'm going to glue it together. So I'm going to do that and then I will show you this box outside in natural light. So I hope you've enjoyed the pour. And when I show you in natural light, I hope you'll be able to see all the beauty of this glitter and this ivory pigment together. So, yeah, if you enjoyed, thank you very much and hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon for the next one. Bye.